This was the year that dared to ask, what happens to us in the future? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 events of 1985. But it wasn't the taste of new Coke that people didn't like. It was the idea of it. For this list, we'll be looking at events from each half decade, ranging from the fields of pop culture, natural disasters, medical breakthroughs, sports, and political happenings. And we're basing our choices on a mix of their significance at the time and their lasting impact today. Nabi Barry and his Amal militia have control of all of the TWA hostages who have been taken off the plane in Beirut. This is part of a series of videos spanning the decades. Number 10. The Armero Tragedy The Arenas Crater, 16,000 feet above sea level, erupted. Despite nearly a year's warning, up to 25,000 lives were lost following the eruption of the Nevado del Ruiz volcano in central Colombia. When seismic activity began occurring in November of 1984, many ignored the danger, as the volcano had been dormant for almost 70 years. When disaster finally did strike in 1985, the extent of the eruption initially went unnoticed due to a storm. Armero's mayor and the town's priest both assured the public they were safe, and citizens were advised to stay indoors. Aerial reconnaissance of the region showed that the mudslides covered a 20-square-mile area. 85% of Armero had vanished. However, the eruption actually triggered lava-induced mud and landslides. But since these took a few hours to reach Armero, the unfortunate truth is that much of the town could have evacuated had they been adequately warned. <laughs> Number 9. The Sinking of the Rainbow Warrior Waitemata Harbour, July the 7th, 1985. The Rainbow Warrior is welcomed by a flotilla of small boats. To put an end to the Greenpeace protests of French nuclear tests in the South Pacific, two bombs less than 10 minutes apart were detonated as of 11.38 p.m. and blew a car-sized hole through the hull of the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior, which was docked in New Zealand. At 11.49 p.m., the ship sunk, and at least one person, photographer Fernando Pereira, was killed by drowning. Investigators deemed the attack a criminal act and soon found French agents Captain Dominique Prieur and Major Alain Maffard, who were posing as Swiss tourists, responsible. Two of the bombers captured by New Zealand were jailed for 10 years but served only two. Although attempts were made to deny and even cover up the incident, the French government was eventually forced to pay Greenpeace over $8 million in compensation. My family and I pretty much accepted what happened in 85, but that doesn't mean that we're gonna forgive and forget. Number eight the professional debut of Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was like the hottest up-and-coming fighter that we had seen since the uh, young Cassius Clay. At 18 years of age and at a muscular 214 pounds, Mike Tyson made his professional boxing debut against heavyweight Hector Mercedes. In what would become typical fashion for him, the upstart defeated Mercedes by TKO in a mere 107 seconds. Trained by Custamato, Tyson relied on a peekaboo technique and sheer intimidation, which proved to be as effective as his right hook, right uppercut combo. This is as bad as I've ever seen Donnie Long look, but and give Tyson credit, and that's it. it! Wow! Tyson would go on to fight 14 more times in 1985, winning all 14 and earning the heavyweight title in 1986 while Mercedes would retire in 1995 with a 1-10 record. Dan Halpin, I guess, is the only man, and this one may not go much longer as a crushing right hand sends Alderson down. Number 7. The North American launch of the NES. The Nintendo Action Set, including the control deck with double game pack and zapper light gun for just $99.99 at Toys R Us. By 1985, the gaming market in North America was all but dead. So, it's no surprise that despite strong sales in Japan, retailers were hesitant to stock the newfangled Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo was undeterred, however, and opted for a small launch in New York City, the toughest market they could think of, and separated the brand from the pack by banking on newbie-friendly jargon, game-accurate box artwork, and innovative gadgets such as the Zapper, while offering stores a no-risk stocking policy. Nintendo's efforts paid off, and by the end of 1986, 
console sales had crossed 1 million units. Number 6. The Hole in the Ozone Layer The sun sends delicious ultraviolet radiation, but that killjoy ozone layer blocks out the deadly rays. Although scientists had confirmed the existence of a hole in the ozone above Antarctica in December of 1984, those findings were not made public until May of 1985. Gaia, the ozone hole over the South Pole, it is bigger than ever! Dangerous radiation is pouring in! However, it was not until August, following an atmospheric sciences conference in Prague, that the news became a mainstream media sensation. What the ozone hole does is it allows more ultraviolet light through to the surface. Now that's a problem for living things at the surface, mostly in fact for us. That the hole seemingly came out of nowhere was a major cause for concern, as the ozone layer absorbs harmful and potentially cancer-causing solar ultraviolet radiation. One chlorine molecule in a little cycle can destroy thousands of ozone molecules. Scientists linked the hole to the release of chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, into the atmosphere, which forces ozone, a form of oxygen, to disperse in the stratosphere. An unprecedented display of international cooperation to protect the world's environment. The Montreal Protocol, signed today, aims at stopping the deterioration of the ozone layer in the atmosphere. Number 5. The RCA buyout, GE acquires NBC. RCA yesterday was taken over, merged, they're calling it a merger. <laughs> it was one of those gun-to-the-head mergers, ladies and gentlemen. Following a year of speculation regarding the future of RCA, fellow electronics giant General Electric acquired the company for a whopping $6.28 billion, which was the largest merger outside of the oil industry at the time. <laughs> Although GE previously owned RCA until 1930, and while both companies produced consumer electronics and developed defense technology, GE was only after a single RCA holding in the 80s, NBC. NBC the actual transaction closed in 1986, but the announcement itself was made the year before, and made headlines in various news outlets starting in that year. GE had long wanted to enter the broadcasting market, and the merger netted them not only NBC, but five affiliate stations as well. Not that everyone was exactly thrilled about it. I'm thrilled about it. No, you're not. You hate it. You I hate heard, it. I heard today that GE originally owned RCA. We, we don't care. We don't want to be taken over by GE. What are I, these knuckleheads going to do when they get in here? Number four, the release of Windows 1.0. Just $99! That's right! It's $99! It's an incredible value, but it's true! Requiring a minimum of 256 kilobytes of memory and 100 bucks, Windows 1.0 finally hit the market in 1985. The operating system, codenamed Interface Manager, was first presented to the public on November 10, 1983, and was originally intended to be released in April of 1985. However, Microsoft delayed the release on two occasions, and also denied ever announcing a release date at all. Hello, computer. Just use the keyboard. Retrospectively groundbreaking, the OS was seen as a dud by many critics, owing to its over-reliance on the mouse, and because the interface was actually made of tiles, not windows. And honestly, who the hell wants tiles? But whatever it was, it was here to stay. Order today, P.O. Box 286, DOS, except in Nebraska. Number three, the Geneva Summit. That all started here on Lake Geneva in November 1985. A tidal wave of ice melting analogies came into effect when American President Ronald Reagan and Soviet General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev met during the Geneva Summit. After innumerable media photos, Reagan ushered Gorbachev into a side room. There, accompanied only by an interpreter on each side, the two leaders had their first chance to size each other up. The meeting marked the first time the two respective nations had met in eight years, and although it was not confirmation of all-out peace, it was certainly a step in the right direction. Both leaders also understood 
that successful symmetry was a process to be worked at over time. Both leaders agreed to a 50% reduction in nuclear arms to prevent an arms race in space, to work together on nuclear fusion power, and not much else. But at least the world didn't end. And that's always good, right? We cannot afford to let confusion complicate things further. We must be clear with each other and direct. We must pay each other the tribute of candor. Number two, live aid. Viewed by 1.9 billion people in 150 countries and utilizing 13 satellites, Live Aid ultimately raised over $125 million in aid for famine-stricken Ethiopia. The brainchild of Bob Geldof and Midge Ure, Live Aid was the spiritual follow-up to the Band Aid charity single. And involved over 65 acts on stages in London and Philadelphia. Musically, the star of the day was Phil Collins, who played both venues and pulled triple duty as a solo artist and drummer for both Eric Clapton and Led Zeppelin, while Bono literally saved a woman's life and Queen gave the performance of their career. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Until this photograph, for 73 years, what happened when the Titanic hit bottom had been a mystery. That Paul Castellano is dead is of interest to us because of who he appeared to be, the head of a crime family. Number one. The FDA approves AIDS blood testing. Bobby Campbell of San Francisco and Billy Walker of New York both suffer from a mysterious newly discovered disease which affects mostly homosexual men. Although AIDS had long been in the public consciousness, 1985 was a watershed year for the illness. That year, the FDA approved blood tests aimed at preventing tainted blood donations and the first international conference on AIDS was held in Atlanta, Georgia in April. A victim of AIDS, a homosexual who was told to take a leave from his job. I heard through the grapevine that, you know, there were people that were, ups, you know, n nervous about my being around. Stereotypes and misconceptions about the virus still held strong. For example, fire departments ceased using the kiss of life while churches worried that AIDS could be spread through communion wine and insurance companies spurred their own outcry when they began screening for the disease. Movie star Rock Hudson died at his Coldwater Canyon home this morning. His publicist says that the movie star's body has already been cremated. However, it was the AIDS-related death of actor Rock Hudson on October 2nd that finally gave a public face to the disease and changed the narrative forever. I'm angry because there hasn't been enough research for AIDS, enough funding, and gay people are suffering, and it's outrageous. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most memorable event from 1985? For more like gnarly top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.